Hi, everybody, and welcome to the show that was formerly known as The Secret Lives of Geode and Debbie. And I say formally because we've decided to change our name, um, or we're going to add to our name to make it a little more descriptive. We are in the future going to be called The Paranormal Supernatural Secret Lives of Geode and Debbie. But uh, when you email us, please. Still email us at the secret lives of Geoda and Debbie at gmail.com because we're not changing that. <laughs> and uh, our our old episodes will still be there and everything. I'm sorry, what did you say? Because it's too much trouble. It is too much trouble. Can you imagine we have to be working on another email account? <laughs> we're really doing it for them. We're doing it for them so that they don't have to add all that additional wording in there. Wording. It's already long enough as it is. <laughs> that's right. And so, um, we know everybody's under enough stress. They don't need any help. That's right. Yes. We want to make us all easier for everybody so they want to come and see us, listen to us, hear us, and email us as much as possible. That's our, that's right. that's our goal. <laughs> um, today, everybody, we're going to um, discuss the infield poltergeist, and that is uh, something that um, I haven't been over there to England to uh, go to their place. I don't know if Debbie has, but, <laughs> you know, we try to do stuff that things we've been to or done, but in this case, maybe not so much. <laughs> I, I that would be great, but I'd probably get over there and find out they had tore it down and built some new oh. burger thing there. And yes, I know. <laughs> Let's hope not. Well, we got to get a big old list of when we go over to the UK of all the places we need to go to. We're gonna okay. go see everything like that. Maybe get over to Scotland even see Nessie. I know. I want to. I want to do a DNA test first. See where I'm from. Yeah. That way you can. Let, I'm home. <laughs> I'm at home. Where's my house? <laughs> yeah. Right. Where are my cousins? <laughs> um, really? I don't know that I want to know my cousins over there. <laughs> I'm okay with my cousins over here, but I don't know about my cousins over there. Right? <laughs> well, we've got cousins in Austria on my mom's side that we have a standing invitation to go visit that um, they've really? sent a couple over here for family reunions, and some of our family has gone over there. Wow. I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea how to speak the language, so I'd be lost. But, but it's still available. It's available. What do they speak in Austria? I think it's German. Austrian isn't Austrian like German, but I, guess I, I so. don't. That that may show my well, lack of. <laughs> I was just in, thinking somebody, somebody. Here's my psychic thing for tonight. Somebody on there is going, man, that Debbie sure is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> she's all dumb. She don't know where nothing is. She don't know how many states there are. <laughs> so next time she goes to Tijuana, build that wall. Don't let her back in. That's right. <laughs> they were like, and I don't, uh, is that inappropriate? <laughs> was that was that uh, politically incorrect? Because I don't mean it about anybody but me. Right. No. I, no. I, I took it as you mean in you. <laughs> I just meant strictly me, and I I meant any any parties. Uh, connected in that situation, would it, it, they, they're they're wanting to keep me out. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Well, well, hey, uh, yeah. I was just going to tell you, my search engine search engine says Austrians speak exclusively German, unless, of course, there's a different language in their household. But as far as the the country, they speak German. Don't they have more poltergeists than anyone? Doesn't I, I don't know why I always when I think of poltergeist. Oh, I guess because the word poltergeist. The is word. German. <laughs> yeah, probably. Well, there. That's why. See, they had more experience with it, so uh, right. they named it. Right. They get to name it. Right. <laughs> if it happens to you, 
you get to name it. You get to name it. <laughs> it's like yeah. discovering a new species. <laughs> That's right. Well, yeah, and for everybody, poltergeist means noisy ghosts. Noisy ghosts. So, but they're not huh? exclusively noisy. They're they will tear mm-hmm. your stuff up. Yeah. They will tear your stuff yeah. up. And you can turn so, around and they will have torn it up without making a sound also. Supposedly. You know, that's so rude. It's so rude. I know. <laughs> For real. Oh, but before we get into our topic, did you have anything uh, paranormal, supernatural that you wanted to share with anybody? Okay. I didn't a- yes. ask you before. Okay. Okay. So, yes, I do. Do you? Um, let me think on that. You go first, and I'll have to think because I'm not sure. Okay, so I got like I got like four, so I'll make them like quick. Okay. You know, I can elaborate on what we were wearing and what we ate for lunch, but I won't. So <laughs> okay. what we were. So I was at the, the. We were signing a contract with with our realtor. We had, and I don't know him that well. I don't know what he does, and it, it, I know more about him than I want to. But I mean, that's okay. No. And so he was uh, having us sign his papers, and he had a clipboard, you know, the old ugly clipboards, and it had mm-hmm. an overspray of white paint on it. And I looked down. He's talking, and um, I'm enjoying listening to him. And I look down at the clipboard, and I see myself. I see my arms. I'm holding that clipboard. This is all happening really quickly, too, because... Uh-huh. Because. And a flash. I see my, you see, uh, right. And I see myself holding the clipboard up over a, um electrical panel and spraying, using it to keep from spraying paint into the electrical panel. And basically an, it was overspray. And um, he he stopped to take a breath, and I said, because he, mm-hmm. he was talking, and uh, he, and I said, this clipboard, I said, if I didn't know better, and I, I say these things this way for a reason, I said, if I didn't know better, I would say somebody <laughs> held this over an electrical panel and did and because they made a last-minute decision not to spray, they needed something to cover an electrical panel. While they were spray painting, and he and he leaned <laughs> forward in the chair and he said, "That's exactly right, and I'm the one who did it." And I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, well, I saw it. I didn't tell him that. Mm-hmm. The reason I will, say, I, the reason I say to people, I, I try to kind of disarm them when I say crazy stuff like that because when I follow mm-hmm. it up with, "Oh, I see stuff like this all the time," I tend to lose them. <laughs> so I, right. <laughs> so yeah, but he was very intrigued by that because he just stopped. And you could see the look in his eye, like, "Wow, that was me." <laughs> and mm-hmm. um, but but he said, you know, and he leaned forward and said, "That's exactly what happened, and I'm the one that did it." And um, and so that that's the just of that. I was I love to see stuff like that in my mind's eye, and then ask somebody. But I always try to do it in a very disarming way. You know what I think happened here, kind of thing, and they never mm-hmm. question mm-hmm. that I do it often enough and I I um my second quickie quickie story was I, I was talking to my brother and, and I heard a crow in it well I heard what I, I didn't know some bird screech screamed and <clears throat> I said what was that and my brother said it was a crow and it was so unnerving and unsettling and um so when he and I were through talking I drove back home, and there were cars all out in the street uh, down the road uh, about three, four yards from my house. And Mm -hmm. um, my neighbor had passed away. And uh, I thought, was that, were they telling me? You know, I mean, Mm -hmm. I I, Mm -hmm. I really felt like, I I almost feel like there's something else to that story that I've forgotten. Um, I don't don't remember. I mean, you you gave more detail about finding out about the neighbor passing away. 
But it's the crow. We talked about that, you know, crows are, all birds communicate with the spirit. You know, either they're omens of impending death or telling of death or helping helping um, souls get to their next location. But I don't know right. any other part of that story. I'm well, it was just it. Was a, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I think it was more of the what frightened me when the crow did that was it, it, it was unsettling. I, I felt mm-hmm. something out of it. It was almost like an earthquake. And mm-hmm. but the, the way it screamed, it was like, oh, that's not. I, I know when the birds are telling us that there are snakes around. I know all these noises. And this was right. like a scream, and so um, that that was it was unsettling to come back and and uh, there was someone parked out there and I said, mm-hmm. you know what happened because the police were there and everything and and when he told me that this man had died it was like there's your there's your reason for your screeching crow, mm, right? And, um, a screaming crow and there were no other crows by the way. Sometimes when you hear one of these birds, you'll hear the other birds. They're communicating, and mm-hmm. you can hear that this was it. And it made not another sound. So mm-hmm. that was a little unsettling for me. And then yeah. uh, the the other the other paranormal thing this week, was, which was actually today, and I was looking in my rearview mirror, and I saw a, a, a caped person with, dark, with navy blue, uh, a navy blue cloak, walking and I was like they were walking this way and they looked sad and I um you know spun around in my seat to look to see that there was no one there I saw them in my rear view and um I've been seeing a lot more stuff this week and I don't know if it's Mm -hmm. because this man Mm -hmm. passed away or because I've been kind of working on it I don't know but anyway that's my those are my paranormal stories for the week yeah, the um, the the person you saw in the rearview mirror, that's kind of, that's spooky. <laughs> Especially when, I mean, but I guess they could just be walking by, so it doesn't mean they were out to get you, so that's good. Oh, no, I never feel like they're out to get me. I know they do work. They, um, and also, my husband saw one dash from here yesterday. He said it was um, about... He said between three and four foot tall. It was gray. Oh. It came from our house, and it zipped across the street, and he said it had a tail. And he said, I'm not telling you I saw it in my mind's eye. He said, I saw it. I'm watching it. And mm-hmm. it zipped from mm-hmm. over here over to there. And he goes, but, you know, that house has gotten a little haunted. And I said, you know, I kind of noticed that. That house <laughs> is taking on energy because it's uh-huh. sitting vacant. Oh, yeah. Hmm. And so I was like, oh, that's good. Okay, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Ooh. I'll have to let me know if you, uh, let us all know if you see any more of those things. Is this the house that has the shadow people? That house was actually um, repossessed. So I haven't seen anything in quite some time. But the, no, this is actually uh, a trailer, a mobile. Mm-hmm that mm-hmm. is on the next lot but belonged to the same person. So it was kind of all one mm-hmm. big thing. Um, and when I go, I have actually thought I saw the front door open several times and it looks like a big, dark, black hole. And I'm like, mm-hmm. is that door standing open? And if it's standing open, what am I seeing? Because it looks yeah. like an endless, deep, dark, black hole. And I oh, have wow. put my car now in, th- in reverse three or four times to double check what I'm seeing. And then hmm. when I look in, it's, it's, it, it, the door is there, and there's a pair of um, shutters that she hooked on the door. They, they don't belong there. So if you're trying to picture this oh. in your mind's eye and saying, that doesn't make any sense, it really doesn't make any sense. They're a pair of, you know, like uh, – a bar, bar yeah. door shutter, you yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that's and what I was on, imagining, yeah. Okay, and they're on the bottom of a white door. But several <sighs> times I've looked there, and it's black. Weird. And it looks like infinity. I mean, uh, uh-huh. you know, infinity or whatever you call it, uh-huh. infinity. Uh-huh. 
I don't know what I'm talking about. Get it. So it's been a little spooky, and I was like, that house is picking up energy like like crazy, Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. it's just sitting there. That's why. That's what they do. Okay. Next next year, maybe I'll buy it. We'll turn it into a haunted house because it already is. Well, yeah, save money on hiring people. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Just let the in- inhabitants have fun. All right. Well, I haven't thought of anything that ha- happened with me just because I've been focused on got a little bit of work done on my shoulder this week, and I've been focusing on, on that and getting stuff in order before that happens. So Yeah. Um, I have had my paranormal radar turned off, basically. <laughs> right. I don't, I, you know, you, you're scurrying around trying to get this done and that done, and you don't have time. Exactly. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, okay, well, let's go ahead and get started on our episode. Um, episodes, episode, the infield poltergeist. Um, I tried to watch The Conjuring 2, which is, which is based on this story. And I could not find it for free anywhere. <laughs> so, I, but, but the trailers pretty much showed a bunch of, of what was going on. Uh-huh. <laughs> Excuse me, everybody. Um, I did, I did quite some time ago watch the um, documentary or stuff about what was going on, so I had the general idea, and I saw how some of the movie was a little bit elaborated, so uh, I said, okay, I don't have to watch that. I don't have to pay to watch that movie, <laughs> so. I don't like movies like that, and I'll tell you why, because, um, they do embellish because they're making a movie. I like documentaries mm-hmm. because... I'm not saying the documentaries don't embellish, uh, right? But that, 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 that isn't the bones of what they're supposed to be doing. So they're at least talking to the parties who were involved, and even if those parties are mm-hmm. psyched up about it, it's still straight up right. the movie, the movie. So. Right. So, so yeah. So between the two of us and the things we've watched and read and heard, we can give some give some information on this. Um, it's one of the classics. I think they they hold it up because there's a lot of controversy. Like a lot of investigators believe it's true, and then a lot, I guess, believe it's fake. So they, um, I mean, I know one of the interviews I saw, they got pretty heated. The the skeptic got pretty heated with one of the women and uh, the researcher. Um, huh. Yeah, so anyway, but let's just start with the beginning. It was um, 1977 through 1979 in Enfield, England. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, they make a big deal out of ta- saying the address. Did you notice that? And in, it's like mm-hmm. 20 or 284 Green Street. And, I mean, in here... We'll say, oh, this house downtown. But yeah. I don't know if if it's because that house is so famous. That's why they say it. Or I mean, because I don't know. Do we know the address of the Amityville house? I mean, I'm sure people, some people do. But is it put out there all the time like that? It not. I don't think it's absolutely uh, well. Yes, actually, I I believe it. It is, is and okay. I. It's really been uh, not a good thing for the Amityville house because people who people uh, do things like throw things right. at the house and and urinate mm. at the mm. house and they're just all kinds of. It's really not good for the place. Oh yeah! Wow. Well, so at this place, I know that um, I heard that you know there was a family we're going to talk about. And then the next family that only lived there for a couple months, and then the the family that lived there after that. And basically, they said we don't want anyone to know because we don't want our children to know. But it's kind of interesting. It's like they'll eventually find out because they put that address out there. Right. So, you know, okay. 
Um, but anyway, um, I know a family lived there, a single mom. I don't know if she was divorced or what her situation was. And then her four yes. kids lived there. Was was that it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, she, she was, it was a, a really bad divorce. Okay, okay. Um, the stuff- and the dad would come around. They were they were under a lot of stress. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, no. That's fine. The dad did come around or did not. Okay. What what happened was that that they had the Janet. Um, she she was I think nine at the time that her parents divorced. And what the dad did was he came around to call. He came around to to pay. Uh, what they call maintenance money, which I, th- I think is equivalent to uh, child support and alimony type mm-hmm. money. When sometimes, okay. a couple of times, he actually brought his girlfriend, which upset the mother quite a bit. And the, they were, the idea was that maybe this family was just under so much stress, they were creating mm-hmm. a lot of this uh, out of their own imagination. Right. Oh, okay. So it really wasn't like they were creating it as a true poltergeist. They were imagining it because of the stress, they, psychological stress they were under. Uh, that right. That maybe the, they're implying that maybe the family as a whole, yeah, was mm, was creating okay. it uh, because they have psychological issues related to this divorce. Right. Because I know that poltergeist a lot of times, you, and you've brought this up before, it, a lot of times it's the um, adolescence, the energy and the angst from the adolescence that causes it to manifest. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that, that was the same theory used in this, is that these these girls were, were both um, pre-puberty or, or beginning to, you know, go through their puberty and mm-hmm. that... That could have had something to do um, with the goings on. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. So that that was a suggestion here too, a large uh, uh, suggestion. Yeah. Well, I know that um, Janet was 11 and Margaret was 13 when it started, and then their little brothers. They get mentioned a couple of times. They were like seven and four or something like that. Uh-huh. I'm not sure. Um, Anyway, um, I love this story. I guess love might not be the right word, but I love the story of how it first started, how it first manifested. Did you, uh, it, with the the big, huge chest of drawers, I guess you'd call it, chest of drawers or something moving? Yeah. Yes, and... Yeah, and the girls kept were watching this, and then I, what I understood was that the mom, they're like, Mom, this is happening, and she didn't really believe them, and then she came in and saw mm-hmm. it and couldn't deny it. Right, You're, yeah. Said. Yeah, she was mad. I remember one of the interviews, she was mad because apparently the night before they had been making noise, and she was yelling at them, and, and she'd sent them up to bed, and the night of this incident, she was she said she went like tearing up there because she was gonna like light into them because they were making all this noise, and then she saw the chest of drawers moving or dresser, I guess maybe it was a dresser which to me it's hard to distinguish what the the difference between the two of them are. <laughs> I think they're interchangeable in my mind, but yeah. apparently it was it was so heavy that she couldn't. She tried to move it back, and it, she couldn't even move it, but she literally saw it moving towards her or towards something. I don't know what it was moving towards. Was it yeah. trying to block the kids in the bedroom? Is that what it was? Yeah. I don't. I didn't get that impression. It was just that it was moving, and she was watching it consistently move. <laughs> Okay, yeah, and then when she tried to make it move it herself and it it moved against her, um, she told the kids to get out of the house. They all went out and they got a hold of, uh, got in contact with her neighbor who was a construction worker, I guess is what he was. Right. Mm -hmm. And then he went in he saw it moving i don't know if he struggled with it or not but he saw it moving and i know he ran out and was like 
it scared him, and everybody was like, big construction worker like that? <laughs> and he's scared? So, well, what, what I heard was that he had been a bodybuilder, but I don't know that he went a construction worker, too. But, I, you know, that he was a strong and tough person. But, yes, it, it, did, it frightened him. Yeah. So um, was it the same night or another night that they called the police? I think and I think it – hmm, I don't know for sure on that. I don't either, but I think I don't think it was the same night because they didn't know what was going on. Yeah, I think maybe that was it. But, yeah, I thought that was pretty funny that, that they called the police. The police come in. They saw the chair move, a big heavy chair apparently, and – um, then they like look for, st and the police, because they're police, you know, they're like looking for strings or trying to see if it's a hoax. No strings are attached to the chair to make it move like four feet across the floor. And so then they leave and say, oh, it's not a police issue. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's no, there's no crime here. And, and then what do you do in that position? <laughs> well, but I guess I I 100 I'm gonna say I 99 percent actually believe the story. My one percent doubt mm -hmm. is why on earth you you have four children. Although people make different decisions than me all the time, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. My decisions are not always right. the right decision, obviously. But if I live in a house as a single mother with four mm -hmm. children, and this was my kids are already under stress over my divorce. Um, these right. people don't have any money. They don't have a lot of money, and I realize that it costs money to move. But I, I just cannot for the life of me. The one percent that makes me think it's not true is the fact that they didn't move. Why on earth? Why would it be worth it to anyone to stay in a situation like that? Right. It, and it's not a family house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no good it's reason not, for it. It's not, it's not a family mm -hmm. home or anything like mm -hmm. that. It's just a rental, I believe. Right. So why I would think you do that? So. Why, why would you put yourself and your kids through that? Yeah. Other than, you know, she might have been strapped for money and after a divorce and and just couldn't afford to move. You you can't um, endure. I mean, now, I mean, if I were talking to the daughter and the daughter said to me, she had a good logical reason for that, uh, you know, maybe she was on a um, fixed rental, you know, mm -hmm, and, and, mm -hmm. and, couldn't, and couldn't get a, like a voucher to move or something like that. But I think in yeah. a circumstance that was so big that the media took it on, surely someone offered to help this family. Oh, to move. Right, right. That's a good point, uh -huh. yeah. So I don't... that's the part. Hmm. Well, I know that, um, yeah, because let's see, uh, there was... Uh, Janet and her sister, but mostly Janet, like talked with um, like Bill Wilkins. I don't know. Uh -huh. I, they, they said at one point there were there were like sixteen different people that were there entities. I think Janet talking to Bill said there were like hundreds or thousands, and then Margaret said there were like sixteen. And, but I know Bill Wilkins was the one they always talked about because he was so, because they proved, they proved his existence. Like when his son saw it on the news, he called and told how his father died and it was how Janet had, or how the voice coming through Janet said he had died. Mm -hmm. I guess I should, you know, and, and so. Well, Go ahead. I'm done. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. You said and, so you weren't. Well, well, I, well I, I was done enough. I mean, I, I, I was going to say and other stuff happened. <laughs> okay, because now that would be one that they could have learned 
from, and I really do believe their story, but that is one that they could have learned from a neighbor. Mm, true, because I was thinking there wasn't, you know, in the 70s, they didn't have a way to research it, really, unless they went to the newspaper, but you're right, they could have heard it through neighbors. Right, so that one I would, I would probably write that off as, uh, so, you know, they were messing with, the one thing that really harmed them was mm-hmm. that the girls were messing with the investigators, and, and right. at one point, they had, he had a, a tape recorder going and said that uh, he had left the tape recorder going, and, and, and they said, oh, the ghost uh, took off with your tape recorder and or or moved it or something of that effect and he found it it was rolling and the girls are on the tape recorder saying let's play let's you know let's play a trick on the investigator mm-hmm. okay this doesn't yeah. sound like frightened girls to me right right yeah N- none of the interviews i ever saw did they seem frightened at all um but I did. I did see. I think it was Janet said, and I think it was as an adult. I don't think it was as a kid that, that about two percent of what they did was a hoax, and that the other ninety-eight percent was real and factual. So, and they said the reason they were doing the hoax stuff on the investigators was they were trying to test them and just see what they could get by with. So um, it was that, and they got caught bending spoons. Now, I never heard the whole story about what were, were they bending spoons to leave them so it looked like Bill had done it, or, you know, I'm not sure what that was about. Um, and but let, go ahead before I get on the next subject. <laughs> oh, well, the, the spoon bending thing. Um, they they mentioned uh, I can't think of his name, but he was supposed to be this uh, big psychic, and and that he could bend spoons and all this. Uh, and his it, name was the like, magician Jillian. guy. Yeah, the magician guy. Yeah. They they said did did the girls have the same ability as this guy? But that guy actually got found out in the 80s or 90s about his his spoon bending it, it's a trick i mean a magician's oh. trick it isn't and he isn't and and uh so they were saying maybe like this man who can bend spoons with his mind the girls could and they did uh they did oh. bend metal but okay uh geller was that his name he had a very unusual name, and I think it's something Geller. Hmm, that sounds familiar. You, it like, it's hmm. Yuri, Yuri, Yuri Geller. Yuri Geller, okay. That name is, oh, here, okay. Um, okay, see, American, I just Google, looked down on Google, um, American magician Melbourne Christopher briefly investigated, failed to observe anything that could be called paranormal, and was dismayed by what he felt was suspicious activity on the part of Janet. Uh, He would later conclude that the poltergeist was nothing more than antics of a little girl who wanted to cause trouble, and who was very, very, very clever. Uh, And ventriloquist Ray Allen also visited the house and said that Janet's male voice was vocal tricks. But that Geller name is also familiar too. I don't see him on here yet, but maybe. But no, he uh, only meant. Oh, okay, he was only of mention. Oh, okay, okay. He wasn't a part of it. They were just comparing her ability. That they were what they were saying oh, okay. was that that's what I'm telling you. Yuri Geller was a famous uh, mm-hmm. magician. That could so they said could been spoon. They were only speaking of him and comparing her ability to like, his ability. But gotcha. they saw back at those in those days when they thought he was the real deal. But he has mm-hmm. since been uh, 
uh, found out that he, he, oh. he was faking it. Hmm. Okay. Wow. Or, well, um, I was going to say about the vocal, her vocal, talking is Bill. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, like I, I was like, how could she do this without moving her, her lips? But then today I, I tried it because I was uh, read on here about how it was like done by the vocal cords at the very back of your neck, not your front ones you use when you're speaking all the time. And mm-hmm. I tried it and I was like, yeah, you can do it. You can do it without moving your lips. I never knew that before. Maybe that's how ventriloquists do it. I never knew that. And uh, so, so there's that possibility. But then the, they said, specialists said that if you use those, whatever they're called, back vocals or uh, I can't remember what they called them, for very long it'll cause damage to your vocal cords. And you, right, you can only right. do it for like 15 minutes without a sore throat. And these girls were doing it for like three or four hours. So what what I heard was they were doing it for days in some cases. Oh, you know, hours. Yeah, that's time, true. Right, right. It's several hours, and then take a little break, and then several hours, and then and then be quiet, and then but yeah, for days at a time. Exactly, exactly. I watched that girl move her lips, though. I was you know I was watching one of the actual interviews, and I could see mm-hmm. her bottom lip was was. No, I, I to be honest with you, I here's what I really believe happened. I, this is the gist of I watched her lips move. Yes, she's a hoaxer, uh, but I believe the drawers moved. I believe the dresser moved. Mm-hmm. I believe the mother was telling the truth, and I all I believe the poltergeist activity. Mm-hmm. I do not, however, necessarily believe anything that the girls did, but I will say did. this, yes, mm-hmm. but I, I would be willing to also say I might be wrong because when you, I, I, how, what am I trying to say? I, I want to say this this way. There, there are times when in, in doing mediumship, you, you feel something moved within you. Mm-hmm. Um, you you feel the urge to, or you feel things pass through you. So I do believe that that does happen, and I believe that the shenanigans may not have necessarily been perpetrated by the girls. That it was a shenanigan, but it was don't look shenanigan up anyway. Um, <laughs> but that um, the girls were being used to make fools of themselves by something unworldly. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They were puppets. They were puppets of the, uh, but not used, um, to, uh, not, not too convincing, but mm-hmm. that their minds were altered by, by energies in the house. Mhm, mhm. So they weren't possessed. They were just, yeah, they were just enticed, maybe, to do this stuff. Who knows what they were told or felt they could get get out of doing it. Well, yeah, but that's I know. That's the thing. Whoa. What happened? Are you there? Yeah, I'm I here. Just, yeah, I just. It's just an energy thing. I guess what I'm trying to say to you is this, that I ultimately I feel that the girls probably have some natural witch, if not quite a lot, of natural witch mm-hmm. tendencies and that they drew in stuff and they were young children, didn't, did not know how. Okay, I have feelings and things that rush over me that I go, hey, that's not mine. That doesn't fit. And And the reason that, I do that is that when you're, you read about these things, you're, you're learning, but you're also, when you're practicing, okay, when you open yourself up that way, and these are children, they're open. They're open because they don't know better. You know yourself if some 
a person with a, a nasty perspective comes your way, like me, for example, I might come your way. You put your wall. <laughs> bring my nasty energy sometimes. You put your walls up to say, I'm not letting that nastiness in. Now, everyone does that. Everyone does mm-hmm. that. I don't care if they go to church on Sunday. I don't care what they believe. I, I don't care. When someone comes up to you and you go, oh, there's my horrible neighbor, and she's going to tell me some horrible stories, but mm-hmm. I'm going to put my shields up, and I'm going to, I'm not taking that in. I'm not drinking that poison. Everybody does that, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, right. But Children, children do block too, but in this case, these girls are so intrigued by what's happening, they didn't shield out the negativity. They didn't want to. They want to be a part of it. They want Mm -hmm. this attention. And you know, if you noticed, it was my observation that there were very many men involved in this, and I don't mean that 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 there was any sort of sexuality issue, Mm -hmm. but rather father issues. Dad mm-hmm. is gone. We don't oh, get yeah. attention. So leaving them to, but I'm not saying they were playing games. I'm saying that they left themselves open to whatever, mm-hmm. whatever energy was there, whatever was coming through, because it was enticing for them, but it was enticing for spirit energy. Mm-hmm. Right. So there was a double positive there uh, to to say, wow, these men are sitting and writing in journals about me, and and they're really Mm -hmm. interested in me, and Dad doesn't come around so much anymore. And I think that their perspective on that was these girls want this male energy. I don't think that that was, you know, that didn't uh, take a rocket scientist to figure out. Right. I think that in that they lent themselves to negative spirits. and that Yeah, that would make sense. It might be... They, it might be their voices, and they might be playing games, but I don't know that it was necessarily their idea. There. That's gotcha. What I mean. yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, and yet what you said about the poltergeist activity, actually, that kind of makes sense because there were things that were happening away from the children, like like um, the children weren't, weren't in the area when a fire would start or... Um, you know, candles would light or matches would light or Legos would go flying through the air or water would start running and the children weren't they in that area when it happened. I, I know there was a picture somewhere of a uh, a city or a love seat that was thrown upside down. Like Janet had gotten off of it and then it was thrown upside down, but it was like the guy was, the investigator was watching when it happened. And he said, Janet didn't do anything. It did it on its own. So it's like the activity was different than than the things that the girls did, the talking and and the – I don't know. Did you hear the any of the – did you see any of the stuff about the knocks? Like the guy was recording and said, knock two for yes and one for no or whatever he said. Well, I don't know. Was, Were the girls there when that was going on? Well, what I was going to say was what I saw was they were speaking about interviews they were doing with Janice, and everyone was quiet because basically they're kind of on the set. Right. Um, and everybody was there, and they're interviewing her, and the knocking starts. But it was, you know, it was the typical knocking. Um, mm hmm. And you could see the girl was kind of startled, but also kind of almost like, <laughs> you know. I mean, it didn't, yeah. it didn't, in ways it didn't frighten them anymore. Right, right. So that's why I wonder, was that, that sounds like that might have been legitimate, the knocking. If, well. If one of, people were accounted for. Right. Well, one of the things that they were saying was, you know, I've been through this exact knocking thing, and it's like, you know what? Mm-hmm. If if what it, if what had happened to me that the the story I've told about what happened at a at a friend's house, it, it, if that had right. not happened to me, I would say all of this was hogwash, and right. I would blow it up. <laughs> but one of the things they talked about in that was that you would hear it in the kitchen. 
then you would hear it in the living room. Now, it sounds like it's coming from the living room. They're over uh-huh. the next room. They they look. There's nothing there, and it sounds like it's coming. You know, it's just all over moving around where unless it's staged, uh, th- that this isn't mm-hmm. going to happen, the girls are sitting there in front of them. So the girls are not right. the creators of this. If someone right. is, it isn't, it isn't them. Okay. Okay. But I, I yeah. don't. I, I, here's the thing. I think like in The Exorcist, the girl was so possessed, she was just the focal point. There could have been more poltergeist activity there, but when people came in, she was the focal point because she mm-hmm. was so possessed. And what I guess right. I'm saying is these, these girls were, well, could say, semi-possessed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right. And so they, they were, there was time and energy that could be spent on other things going on in the house by the investigators. It wasn't exactly just the girls. Yeah, it didn't yeah. even start out being the girls. And yeah, I remember them talking right. about, you know, about Bill. I don't. I, I'm not going to tell you that I don't think that that could have come through. I mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, that Bill could have come through, and that those things could have been fit. But I also see how there could be um, to to say. Oh, there's no way that the neighbors weren't talking about. Somebody dies in a house and somebody else moves in. Children talk, adults talk. It's just, right. And, and yes, they didn't have access. One of the things you got to think of about back then is that those girls didn't have access to videos on YouTube and mm-hmm. all the things that we have access right. that we can say. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what happened to us. They didn't. It wasn't available. Right. Unless you rented the book from the library and read about it. You, <laughs> right. It, right. That's one of the things that makes their story more convincing is mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, they, right. they're they very young girls and they don't have a lot of, um, they have zero theatrical background. Mm-hmm. And uh I, I really do kind of believe and when I see the two sisters now, they do look like a couple of folks have, you know. They've been through something. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and and that's one thing in the interviews. I, I only saw the interview with Janet. I think it was, oh, gosh, I don't know, 2000, sometime in the 2000s. And she was saying this happened and and like her mother actually their mother had a nervous breakdown at some point because of all this and the pressure and they were being called names at school and being had things thrown at them so it wasn't even if they were getting perks from the popularity they were also getting picked on by other mean children and and just just a lot of stress and and Janet was saying I still deal with this stress all of the time I still have nightmares and even though it it doesn't seem like it was very scary except for that first that first encounter they had with the furniture moving um, it still could affect you if you're living through that for so such a long time well uh, you know, go ahead. I'm sorry. I well, I was just trying to think about how to formulate a couple things I was thinking of related to that. Um, oh, like when they were laughing, a lot of people said they were they were giggling and and smiling, so it couldn't have been so bad. But I mean, what do kids do? What do people do when they get nervous and scared? Sometimes they laugh. That's just a natural instinct. And instead of screaming and crying, they laugh at things hysterically sometimes. I've done it. <laughs> so that's, was, that's what I wanted to say. Well, and I, I'll tell you that in situations we don't always, okay, when when that happened, if someone had told me on, on the deal that happened to me, and, and the reason I'm referring to it is because it was similar with the knocking and doors shaking and, um, just a, a very similar situation that 
honestly, I said that night, I was like, had such a rush. And, I mean, if you had said to me, these things are going to happen to you where the doors are slamming, there's knocking and laughing and all this stuff going on in the house that you're in. If you told me that when I was 20 and and they mm-hmm. had asked me, what would your reaction be? My reaction would have been, I'm going to run out of the house. Mm-hmm. I'm out of there. Goodbye. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, <laughs> And that is not what I did. That was not my reaction. And I thought, how many people would not have, reacted that way how many people Mm -hmm. think they would run out but in fact we ran straight to it all of us so we all (laughs) reacted. i bet you if you to ask the other two parties uh hey what would you do what would you do if this happened they'd probably be like get the hell out the door right and they (laughs) i don't think i don't think that when you're talking about something as bizarre as this to say that you absolutely know what a reaction would be is is fair, and I I don't think until you live it, mm-hmm. you, you really you have, have a, you know that you can c- call somebody out. You right. know what I'm saying? Like right. you're saying that yeah. the children are laughing. I don't think you can really call somebody out because you don't really know. And they were dealing with this often, and yes, they were giggling. But mm-hmm. um, I saw it on the the deal. But they were. They were young children. They they were kids. And for all intents and purposes, they don't know that this doesn't go on in other people's houses. Uh, you know what right. I'm saying. They're not living right. the lives of other people. So this has become a, a part of their life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and one of the things I, I'm not sure what I think about was um, – Janet being thrown across the room in their bedroom, um, or bedroom because they shared a bedroom. Um, I, I know that I've seen pictures of her, and it looks like she's jumping on the bed. And that, and they said, well, that's what it looks like. But she literally was being picked up and thrown. And I did. I just remembered. I did hear a woman say that she was outside the home. And she looked up, and in the window, she saw Janet floating horizontal in the air above, uh, by the window. There were and, three people who saw this. Oh, okay. At different times or at the same time? I, I think it was at the same time, but three people outside of the room saw her floating. From out, mm-hmm. They were all three outside, but that particular okay. lady you're talking about, was I, I know, was one of them. Yeah, she 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 wasn't a, a researcher. She was like a, a neighbor or something. Uh huh. And and oh. so that's how her, that's one of their evidence that they have that she literally was floating. Yeah, that lady said, "I'll never come off of that." That's what I saw. I know what I saw. <laughs> she says, and all uh-huh. these years later, and all these years later. But they, their argument was that, you know, uh, people have a tendency to believe, especially when they share information, uh, that mm-hmm. one person will convince the other person. Right. She said, yeah. so she, and not only was she floating, there were things floating in the air as well. Oh, yeah. Like toys, like dolls and toys and things. Yeah. Okay. Seem to remember that. Yeah, and I, she said, I remember she either referred to her being like a balloon or there, I, I think she was referring to her floating like a balloon. I think that's one of the quotes about how she was describing how she was doing. Yeah. But I, I think that's that got to be real. <laughs> uh, well, well, it depends because, you, you know, if the neighbors – have been uh they're up on this they're looking for you know they're they're looking for mm-hmm. anything unusual mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. you know now the, i think when you're looking at this whole thing and you're trying to decide whether this is real or not um that you you have to look at the fact that uh if you if you remove if you extract 
extract the things that could be willy-nilly, that or could be designed, mm -hmm. and just leave what is, mm -hmm. you know, what was seen by eyewitnesses, what was not contaminated mm -hmm. evidence, you still have a pretty strong case. Right. Hmm. Well, yeah, and, and, and like I said, even all these years later, um, they're still talking about it, and, and it's still controversial because so many people still believe, so many professional investigators still believe it, it, it's a fact, the ones that were there you know, will still say, you weren't there, I was there. No, it's not mass hysteria. No, it's not um, suggestion. I was there. It, I remember one the the main guy, what's his name? Gross? Something gross? I, um, I don't remember your name. He was with that. Oh, yeah. He's one with the big mustache, I think. Um, he's been okay. in several different interviews. Um, right, and he he's the one that said something like tape recorders don't lie. He said, okay, yeah, maybe people can be um, uh, take suggestions, but tape recorders don't take suggestions, or tape recorders don't imagine things. You know, because he was talking to one of the skeptics that they were at an interview together, right. and it's like. That's that's right. I mean, the girls could have messed with a lot of stuff, but if they're actually catching things on tape, on video, like the her being thrown across the room, then unless every single person is in on the hoax, then why would they do that if they're a legit organization? I mean, I know some legit organizations fake stuff, but my impression from his organization uh uh, this let me, here it is the Society for Psycho Cyclic is that how they pronounce it Cyclic Research. Whenever they would say it, I was like, oh, I like the way that sounds, but I know Psycho. Well, uh, I I can't remember either now that you're psychical, saying it. Psychical, psychical, yeah, the psychical. Society for Psychical Research. Yeah, uh -huh. I, I like the way that sounds. <laughs> anyway, as being professionals, you know, I mean, they're going to also, they're not going to want to buy into every single thing. They're going to be skeptical also, or, but they're also going to be willing to accept certain things, and that's that's the difference. It's like, oh, because they work for this organization, they're going to accept it all. No, that's not true, but they will accept some of it as truth. I mean, right. why would you be with that organization if you weren't willing to accept that some of it is truth? But Well, and they, they said that the organization had a wide variety of skeptics as well as believers. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so they on weren't the, all about it. Was, they were trying to have a balance there. Okay. All right. Well, I didn't, I didn't see that or hear that. Um, I think one of the funny funny things, and I was I, I was going well. The girl could have been faking this. They heard a noise, and they ran upstairs. And the doctor who saw this went and hollered at his wife or someone else who was on the team and had her come up and look. And apparently, in this alcove in the bedroom there was a nightstand with a radio on it and they said that <laughs> Janet was upside down with her legs up against the wall and her head down beside the radio but she was still sound asleep and they heard her being placed up there like thud and it, she was put up there mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like well now could she have could she have got jumped up there and pretended, <laughs> you know? Because she was a gymnast too, apparently. But then, but then, if they really tested her and she really was asleep, because I know, I don't know when you're a teenager, but I know littler kids when they pretend to be asleep, you can tell. <laughs> you can tell they're pretending. Um, 
So I don't know if she really, if that really was a legit one or, because they didn't see it, they just saw the results of it. Right. But that one made me laugh when he was describing how she was, the position she was in. <laughs> it sounded very uncomfortable. When, yeah, when whenever you're, I think that goes back to what I was saying about Minus that stuff, you know, you say, okay, look, the kid's a gymnast and she's a prankster, so we're not, Mm -hmm. we're going to take that out of the account. It doesn't mean Mm -hmm. it didn't happen. What it means Mm -hmm. is that because these are special circumstances, this gets Mm -hmm. discounted. Right. Because if you you find me in that position, I can promise you only a couple (laughs) of guys could do that because I don't (laughs) could not. Right, <laughs> right. D- different circumstance <laughs> in that in that situation. But right, when you're you're dealing with a, a child, I think that that's probably. Um, but you know, it's like the guy that you're talking about with the the large mustache, and I really like that guy, but I I don't think he's a. Maybe he's a pushover. I'm certainly just listening to him in an interview, mm-hmm. but he a box had flown up out of nowhere and hit him in the head. Oh, and yeah. I heard about that. The girls were over there by him when this happened. Mm-hmm. There were no, you know, these people, okay, look, I, I'm not telling you 11-year-olds aren't intelligent or 14-year-olds or how, mm-hmm. however old these mm-hmm. girls became during this right this situation. Um, but people aren't stupid. <laughs> Right, right. They're going, to find, they're going to find strings. They're going to find holes in these boxes. They're going to find how it was done. And, again, they did not have access to a, a, a ton of magicians' uh, mm-hmm. books or, or anything of that nature. And I can tell you that if they had had an extreme interest in magicians' tricks, hmm that the library would have noticed it, and that would have been the only place they would have been able to get Mm -hmm. access to that kind of information if they were able to get that access. I mean, if it was Mm -hmm. available to them at all. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they probably would have been found out because someone would have said, oh, they're in here researching this all the time. I mean, that happens. That happens. People get found out. People get convicted because of stupid stuff that they've researched. Not stupid stuff, but researching things in their name. <laughs> and and another thing would be that these children, you know, kids are apt to brag. They're going to go to school. They're going to say, you know, and you were saying that they get a lot of the negative. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. That you, how many kids? have it within them not to go to school and say, oh, I'll tell you how I did that. I mean, mm-hmm. if it would draw attention to them, if attention was their goal. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it would be more like, yeah, why are you picking on me? I'm I'm tricking all these people and brag about it. Exactly. Well... I think I, these poor girls are part of being witches. I, I believe that the reason that these girls are this is you know this is me and my personal belief. Mm-hmm. But these girls, these girls are natural. They naturally draw the spirit world, mm-hmm. and they, in their playing around and messing around, they, you know, too much came to them, and it wasn't anything that they, you know, that's the thing is that. Um, on my deal, I don't, I'm a ghost hunter. That's what I, you know, I, mm-hmm. like, I'm not so much, I'm not anymore, but I, I was at the time. And so after that happened, I was like, I would pay, I was sitting there going, how much would I pay for each one of my friends <laughs> to go through what I just did, what just happened to me? And I was like, I give a $20 mm-hmm. bill per person. <laughs> <laughs> I came up with a right. dollar amount that I would have spent yeah. for you, for you. To come to get me to go experience it. To have you experience it. Now, and you know, another thing is, well, why weren't they videotaping when this, let me tell you something. When these things are happening to you, 
they're happening quickly. They're mm-hmm. it, it by the time you go and back then it took a little bit of work. I mean now you can hit a button mm-hmm. on your phone and you're recording. But back yeah. in those days it didn't work that way. Well, and like the pictures, people are like, well, how was a photographer in your bedroom watching you sleep ready to take a picture? And they're like, well, they weren't. They just had their cameras up and running all of the time. That's how they caught them flying through the air and stuff. And if they caught them flying through the air, they probably should have caught them bouncing on the bed instead, you know, bouncing on the bed to fly from one place to another. Um, Because they have their cameras running all the time. So that's how they were fortunate enough to get those pictures. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it took a lot more work to ho- perpetrate a hoax and to to catch things in action. So um, I guess we're going to have to... Uh, finish up here pretty quickly but I was going to say I didn't see I didn't hear much mention of uh, Ed and Lorraine Warren being there I think they I think they sent representatives in or they just came in for a couple hours and interviewed the girls okay did you um, I I didn't know anything about Ed and Lorraine on that deal yeah, that's why the movie The Conjuring 2 is based on this story and about them being there. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I, I, I don't know what interview it was I heard that mentioned them. And uh, I think they just came in and out real quickly. And I don't, I don't know what their, you know, because the story's pretty elaborate, but I don't know what their conclusions were. I'm not discounting them. I'm just saying that when you watch The Conjuring 2, take that into consideration that that <laughs> some of it's just made up. So Right. I, we, I, I really am not a fan of the, the – I was not a fan of The Conjuring. And mm-hmm. um, I, I, I don't like real stories being made into movies because of the fact mm-hmm. that I – uh, you know, I guess I'm saying that again, but because because I like documentaries and they're right. You're getting right. you're re- really getting to listen to the person who mm-hmm. dealt with the situation. Well, and you know, um, one thing that we ought to talk about is the story about um, the the conjuring because it's of um, a, a farmhouse and like. Massachusetts or Wisconsin or something like that and they live there talk about you're talking about people living somewhere they live there for either 10 or 14 years and they literally say even though it was some of the worst times of their lives it was also some of the best times of their lives and when they moved half of them didn't even want to move the girls that were experiencing all the horror didn't want to move but they did it for their mother, you know. So that's a story we might talk about in the future. But, but yeah, I mean, they only moved because their mother said she was going to die if, if they didn't move. And so, okay. <laughs> I guess they you know, were able to deal with it. And that's the thing is that if you can get over – if you okay, first off, if you don't feel that you're alive to the I mean, if there are knives flying at you, you're not gonna stay. <laughs> right. But to, be honest, the, to be honest with you, and having lived in homes with paranormal activity, but believe it or not, there is a sense of, and I know you know this. There's there, or maybe that this is not what you experience or feel. It's almost a sense of normalcy. Mm-hmm. But it is yet a bit frightening, and I, I think it it mm-hmm. kind of takes away from the mundaneness. Um, I know, you know, if somebody had told me when when I, I went through that incident uh, with the the poltergeist incident, mm-hmm. uh, hey, come back next Sunday night for you know we're here for <laughs> you mm-hmm. know uh, every Sunday night at seven p.m. 
By gosh, I would have been there. I would have drug everybody right. that would go with me. There would have been buses <laughs> right. and van loads of people I couldn't stop talking to. So, you know, it's not – if you can get over the the feeling that someone's watching you, mm-hmm. I think that that had to have been an overwhelming thing for me was are we being led into a trap by being pulled to the back of the house? Mm-hmm. Or right. are, we, are we fixing to see an entity – that I don't necessarily want to see. Mm-hmm. Um, so this goes on. You know, it, it, the the gist of it is, if that becomes your normal, then you, you're you probably going to miss it. Yeah, very true, very true. Well, you know, after this family, um, Janet and Margaret and, and uh, uh, Hodson, mm-hmm. um, uh, after that family moved out, the next family that moved in did not uh, was also a woman with children. They didn't see anything, but she said she felt uneasy from the moment she moved into the house. She always felt like there were people watching her, and they moved out after two months because they couldn't because they felt so uncomfortable. <clears throat> so. You know, you've got the ones that stayed there a year and a half, then they stayed there two months, and then the new family, I don't know, any they're the ones that didn't want to talk about it or didn't want their children to know. So who knows what happened with them. But it, it it's, you know, like so, so these people that are having things thrown around the house, they're there for a year and a half, and this other family who only feels uncomfortable leaves after two months. Now so, wait a minute. You're you're saying that people moved I just realized something. What's that? You're saying people moved in there after that. Yeah, after but, after but what? The mom died there in two thousand and three. I thought that's what I understood. Mm. Mm. Oh, I don't know. That's not what I had I had heard they um well Huh, I wonder if, you know what, maybe I'm assuming the 18 months was that they moved out, but maybe that was just the time that Bill was active. Okay, yeah, I may have, I may have misinterpreted what they said. Well, maybe I made a mistake. We'll have to check into that and find out. Um, but in the interview... It, it said, and I thought they said, and the mom, okay, now this is a Mandela, no, I'm just kidding, um, <laughs> a Mandela effect, but I, I thought uh, I thought they said that, that the mom remained there until her death in 2003, but now it could be that their mom inevitably passed away in 2003, maybe I just misunderstood. Mm, yeah, I, you know. I, I don't know. I'll huh. check on that. Well, let's see. I just pulled up information. Let's see if I can get it real quick. Um, and it's about her. There's a, there's a web page about her life and her death. Um, uh Okay, it's going to take too much to read this. So, yeah, we'll have to read it. I mean, we'll have to read into it and then um, or research into it and then give a little update at some point on a quickie or at some point. But, yeah, I know I may have totally been misthinking this the whole time. But, but, yes, at some point after they had moved out, another family lived there for two months and then another family is currently living there. So maybe that's why I thought, well, there's a big gap between the 70s and now we're knowing what families lived where. But it could be that I just I just didn't, I didn't hear it correctly. Well, I'm going to tell you that what you're saying reminds me of what, the Amityville house, because I'm thinking people moved in there for a very short amount of time, and then another family came in who stayed a very long time, who had no, no incidents. Could could that be what mm-hmm. you're you're thinking about Amityville? 
I'm not well, sure you're wrong because I don't have an answer, but I know that that is what was said about Amityville. There was the family who stayed a very short amount of time, and then yeah, there's there's the ones that were murdered, and then the their name. If you were to say their name, I'd say that's it. I I know their name right off the bat. That that had the story was written about that had all the trouble from all the ghosts and everything. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, and then the next family didn't experience anything. No, I I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm going to have to check into this some more. So, okay. I mean, this is where us doing our own separate insur- insurance <laughs> research. Do we do that for <laughs> Right. Uh, we come up with different things and, and also different interpretations because we're listening or reading or watching different things also. So, yeah. Okay. Well, all right. Well, so we let me make a note. Find out <laughs> about mom. Okay. Um, so, uh, We'll go ahead and we'll tell people where to find us. That's a good place to end it. Debbie, We're right here. where would they find us? Right here? Right here. Right here. We're right here right now. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> if we're not here right now and we're somewhere else, when you want to send us uh, or listen to us on YouTube, you can do that at the Secret Lives of Geode. And Debbie. But mm-hmm. now it's not just a secret. Is, is that going to update? I think that will update also. So I guess let's just tell where they can find us at without giving them the name and they can do the research. <laughs> I think once I change it on Podbeam or Bean, our hosting site. They can just enter it in either sent to you. <laughs> did, 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 can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Did, did you hear me just tell you that you cut out tremendously no. two different times? No. Yes, I, I was all alone here and I, I was really afraid. Oh no! I'm serious. You totally were. You were talking about, and then you disappeared, and then you disappeared again. Uh oh. Ooh. I wonder if it's ghostesses. Let me I say this. Need to charge, maybe charge something up. <laughs> Some... You're gone again. Can you hear me? There you are. Okay. Well, I'm okay. Everybody, I'm gonna turn off my headset and go to um, not Bluetooth and see if that helps. Okay. So we'll see. Okay. So can you hear me? Well enough. You were you were much well better enough. on the headset. Okay. Well, I was saying that um, I'm going to change it on Podbean. We'll see if it changes it everywhere else, and then we'll know. Um, But they can just search for us um, on the different podcast sites and hopefully find us. (laughs) That's right. You can still continue to look for the secret lives of Geode and Debbie, uh, and we should pop up that way. I wouldn't even be surprised if we don't pop up as Geode and Debbie. Um, mm-hmm. And you can find right. us on Twitter, uh, Facebook, um, it, 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 as I said, YouTube. And uh, if you want to send us um, an email, what's our email address? It's it's the it's going to stay the same. The Secret Lives of Geode and Debbie at gmail.com. That's right. Yeah, and, and then we'll, well, I was going to say we're also on TuneIn Radio, iTunes, iHeart, Stitcher, and Google Play Music, besides the ones that you already mentioned. Oh, and Spotify. And Spotify. And if you want to send us your spooky items, we cannot return them to you. 
but we certainly will investigate them to the best of our abilities and see mm-hmm. if we pick up anything and um, if you have any suggestions. or And please, uh, like us. Let us know you're out there. Uh, someone uh, left us a, a wonderful uh, a poetry this week, and we, we mm-hmm. still appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, kind of yep. like it is. Cause yeah, it's a public forum. <laughs> yeah, right. So. He he put it on our YouTube channel, so <laughs> it, it, it's it's there. Um, hopefully, he'll. I, I'm waiting to see if he'll let us read it on on the on one of these podcasts. Um, right. In, in the meantime, you can go to YouTube and look at it, and if, uh, mm-hmm. and hit that and hit that like button and help us out. Yes, please. Anywhere you can rate us, like us, follow us, any of that, please do. Um, and when you're sending us your spooky items you want us to investigate, if you have any um, leftover Halloween candy, hey, we're still taking that. I don't care if it's a month old. <laughs> That's right. I, I finally ran out, so <laughs> I need more. If, yeah, if, if you, right. If you left it in the car window, it got a little melty, that's okay. Put it in the freezer and then send it to us. There you go. <laughs> that's but, right. I mean, as long as it's um, in the original packaging. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It has to be that. We we don't need any, uh, uh, you know, repackaged stuff that we might wonder what's in it. <laughs> but, but, um, razor blades in our apples. <laughs> that's right. Well, so you would send that to our post office box, which is at 6001 Northwest 63rd Street, P.O. Box 23651 at War Acres, Oklahoma 73123. So... Okay. That's all your ways you can contact us. And, and all that stuff, if you miss the address, you don't have to go back 10 seconds. You can just look on our uh, uh, Podbean for sure. I'm not sure where else it transfers over. Um, in our in our episode descriptions, I always put all of our information on the end of our episode descriptions. So, And be sure to check those out. I have fun writing those. I try to be a little bit silly when I write them. And we have other things in the mix for you all. We've yes. Got, we've got a, things working. Um, so if you have a, a question you want answered by psychics, mm-hmm. send those questions. And we will send, send us a couple of questions. Send us your stories. Get on, get on that gmail.com. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, but you yeah. you could have a reading on on uh, you could have a reading right here on the radio, and we won't mention your name. Yeah, more than two or yeah. three times. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, so that's our little thing that's in the works right now. You guys will love it. And yeah. so, okay, well, let's All go right. ahead. Anything else? No, I was just gonna say we're gonna close it up, Jim. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, Debbie. Let's let's uh, let's close it up. You guys stay spooky, and uh, I like what Debbie said earlier. You know, watch out for flying knives. <laughs> there you go. I, I don't care where they're coming from, whether they're, they're, you know there's no one behind them or someone's behind them. Just watch out for that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Um, bye, everybody. <laughs>